A few days ago, game designer and author Jeff Engelstein posted something on Twitter that needs to be talked about. He shared this post from the Tabletop Game Design subreddit, titled, Need Help Assessing a Deal. It was posted by a new game designer who was approached by a publisher and presented with the absolute worst proposal I have ever seen. Now, the designer did not name the publisher, so it could very well be a scammer or a complete troll, or maybe they're a brand new publisher who have absolutely no idea what they're doing and should not be soliciting designers until they have a basic understanding of how the industry works. But regardless of who is behind this absolutely abysmal proposal, we need to talk about the terms they presented to the designer so you can be aware of what is and what is not appropriate for a publisher to ask of you. I want to go over this line by line and explain why everything this publisher asked for is not the industry standard. I also want to thank every person who responded to the original post on Reddit and explicitly told the designer not to engage with this publisher and that this is predatory behavior. So the post starts off with, For context, I am a complete newbie to this and I've only ever made board games for fun in the past. I've never made them with the intention of mass printing and selling, and so many of the pieces of my games are handmade. I also don't have any contacts of printers and manufacturers. Somebody reached out to me saying they're interested in publishing my game after seeing it on my website. As per their message, they'd be willing to offer me 1% revenue share capped at a certain amount. Okay, let's stop right there. The first red flag is that this publisher is talking about publishing a game after only seeing it on the designer's website. They haven't played it and they haven't spoken to the designer about it. Of course, it is possible that the publisher is so excited about the game after only seeing it on the designer's website and they are ready to move forward with publishing the game. But that is highly unlikely. And I would personally be hesitant to work with a publisher who doesn't even want to try the game out for themselves or at least speak with me about the game and ask some questions before moving forward with publishing it. But let's give them the benefit of the doubt. For my game, Act Fast, the publisher wanted to move to contract right after I pitched it to them and they hadn't actually played it themselves. Same with Blob Party. So it is possible for a publisher to want to move fairly quickly, even without playtesting it themselves. But then the designer goes on to say that the publisher offered them a 1% revenue share capped at a certain amount. I know that many indie video game studios follow a revenue sharing model because all members of the team are putting in a lot of time and effort to create the game together. And then if they make any money after it is published, they'll share it amongst themselves. In board games, however, things are different. Some games are created by in-house designers that receive a salary from the company, but quite a few are created by independent board game designers like me. And we put in a lot of time and effort on our own to create the game, which we then pitch to publishers. If any are interested and want to publish the game, they will offer a royalty percentage on the wholesale price of the game, not a share of the revenue. This revenue sharing verbiage is another red flag that makes me think this publisher is not familiar with the board games industry. Now, if a team of independent designers and publishers have their own studio and work together to create and publish a product, then they might follow a revenue sharing model. But as far as I know, that is not very common in the tabletop game industry. So let's assume the publisher meant to say a 1% royalty percentage. That is an offensively low royalty percentage. The average royalty percentage, according to Cardboard Edison, who gathers this info from designers from surveys, is 5 to 6%. I'll include a link to the Cardboard Edison's reports in the description of the video. Now, if your game uses a popular IP, or if the royalty percentage is based on a higher per unit sale price, if the publisher sells directly to retailers rather than through distributors, then you could see a royalty percentage between 1.5 and 2.5%. But that is not what this publisher is offering. It seems they're saying they will pay you a 1% royalty on wholesale unit prices, or they're saying they'll pay 1% of the revenue generated from the game, which again is not standard in this industry. But then it gets worse. Then they say capped at a certain amount. Oh, so if the game does really well, the designer should be completely cut out of that success? Um, what? It should, in fact, be the opposite. There's something called an escalating royalty rate, where if a game sells a certain number of units, the royalty percentage paid to the designer actually goes up. Then if the game reaches another milestone in sales, the royalty percentage will increase again. I fully support this model, as it rewards the designer for creating a well-received game that is making the publisher money. Escalating royalty percentages are not the standard in the industry, but I hope it continues to move in that direction and could be something you ask the publisher about when negotiating your contract. But this is all to say that the publisher should never stop paying a designer royalties if the game is continuing to sell. Now it is possible for a publisher to offer to pay a designer a one-time payment to then own the rights to the game. 
rather than entering into a licensing agreement and paying the designer royalties. However, this one-time payment should be a significant amount for it to be worth it for the designer. I personally would never take a one-time payment for a game because there is the risk that you created the next Jenga and leave a lot of money on the table if you sold the rights to the game for a one-time payment rather than licensing the game and receiving royalties. Now, if you thought all of this was bad, buckle up because it accelerates downhill from here. Hey friends, Editing Pam here. I somehow missed a pretty huge red flag. The designer goes on to say that I need to manage designing the whole thing, playtesting, which is standard. So designing the game and playtesting, that's standard for a designer to do. But then it says printing and overall development. So printing, absolutely not. The designer is not expected to print the game. The manufacturing is the publisher's responsibility. And overall development, usually a publisher will do some development of the game and development just basically means like less 10 to 15% of the game to polish it and make it really ready for the target market for the publisher. Quite often the designer will do that as well, so they'll finish the game to 100% and do the development as well. So that's not terrible, but the printing is absolutely ridiculous and not expected of the designer. The post continues. They will handle marketing, distribution, etc. As they should. Publishers are expected to handle the marketing and distribution of the game. That is their job. But then the post continues. Now they're asking me to print 20 demos. What the 20 what? Yes, you heard that right, folks. This publisher wants the designer to create 20 demos of the game to send to them. So the post says, now they're asking me to print 20 demos and send it to them so they can test it. And whenever I ask if they'll pay for the demo printing, they don't answer. This is difficult because I don't have access to this. I don't know 3D art to make pieces for 3D printing either. I will also need to revamp all the 2D art and polish it. After this, they'll decide if they want to publish it or not. Okay, so why is this publisher talking about revenue sharing percentages and capped amounts, etc., if they still don't know if they'll publish the game or not? So it looks like the publisher does want to play test the game before moving forward with a contract, which is standard. But asking for 20 copies is absolute nonsense. Some people have speculated that this publisher is actually a scammer who plans on selling these 20 copies and pocketing the money, which I think is a strong possibility. Now, a publisher may ask you to mail them a physical prototype, and they often won't pay for the shipping costs. This is unfortunate, but it is current standard practice in the industry. They will, however, pay to ship the prototype back to you if they don't want to move forward with your game. But if they want a physical copy, one copy, is the standard. I can't see any reasonable explanation for why a publisher would ever need more than one copy, let alone 20 copies. This is a huge red flag. But the fact that the designer would actually consider doing this for a potential publication deal clearly shows the amount of power publishers have over designers. When you're an independent designer, especially a new designer, it can be incredibly overwhelming when you're approached by a publisher, especially if you're not aware of what is the standard process when dealing with publishers. It can be very easy for us designers to be taken advantage of, especially because we don't want to scare the publisher away by asking too many questions. This imbalance of power is one of the reasons I am very excited about the creation of a new organization called the Tabletop Game Designers Association. Jeff Engelstein, who shared this Reddit post and made me aware of this situation, is actually one of the founders of TTGDA, along with Senfung Lim and Elizabeth Hargrave. These three designers have a wealth of experience in the industry, and according to the TTGDA website, the the organization will offer services to designers, including reviewing contracts and mediation between designers and publishers. This Reddit post really highlights the need for a group like this. Currently, publishers have all the power and resources, while us independent designers are really on our own and have to advocate for ourselves. TTGDA hasn't officially launched yet, but they will soon. I'll include a link to their website so you can join their email list and be notified when they officially launch. And it's situations like the one described in this video that are the reasons that I offer both free and paid one-on-one -on -one sessions with me. So if you are ever unsure or have questions about the board game industry, you can always connect with me. Or you can reach out to lawyer Zachary Strebeck, who I've worked with in the past, who focuses on the board game and video game industries. I'll link to his website in the description as well. Now I'll finish with Jeff Engelstein's concise response to this Reddit post. This is predatory and scary. Never take a deal like this. 